G'day everyone and welcome back to the round 22 edition of Just The Tips. There's only three of these to go in the home and away season. Uh, we will continue them through the finals, of course, but yeah, for most of you, or half the league, more than, there are only three games left for your club. Not the Eagles, of course. We're a late chance to make finals. I have well and truly given up on making huge strides up the footy tipping ladder. It was another, oh, it was a solid week of tipping on the weekend, but obviously a few big upsets, which I'm hoping other people got wrong as well. But main point being, only three games left for most people. That makes me sad. Only three more Eagles games left for the rest of the year, but particularly for rebuilding sides, you know, the season goes right up through November and that's how I intend to make content as well. So either way, it's going to be a really interesting final series, you know, the, the run up to the end of the year, like the actual finals race itself is still fascinating. I still don't really have a clear picture of which teams are going to make it. But that's what we want. We want an exciting finals eight race and that's exactly what we've got this year. So what we're going to do is run through how everyone went in the footy tipping competition as well as some of the other competitions we got here on True Footy. Then we're going to get into my round 22 tips and see how badly I get them wrong. So for me personally, six out of nine is not too bad. So the three I got wrong were I tipped a roughie. I tipped the underdog in Richmond to beat the Bulldogs just because I was trying to score a rough point there and um, yeah obviously got that wrong. Collingwood losing to Hawthorne obviously that's not a result many people would have seen coming. Hawthorne have been dangerous this year but still knocking off Collingwood was a shocking result and the Giants I was pretty confident in them knocking off Sydney as well. Um, that little rivalry they've got is really really hard to predict. It's actually a really good rivalry between two interstate clubs among the best to be honest. More so in the fact of uh, unpredictability and both of these teams always being competitive against each other which is interesting but I got the rest of them right. Uh, obviously Brisbane just hanging on by a thread over Fremantle with a late goal. Essendon just beating West Coast as well. Everyone would have got that wrong had uh, West Coast won naturally. Yeah, six out of nine, and we'll talk about the rest of the competition winners. So first of all, I am 551st. It's getting worse. I think I'm actually, this could be the, the lowest ranking I've had in a while. Um, to get six out of nine and drop five spots when I'm already in a shithouse position, doesn't feel good, but Nathan Collins, I think, was the only person to get all nine correct tips this week with a margin of 38. Obviously, the Bulldogs won by a pretty big margin, so I think everyone's margin blew out a little bit this week. The tipping leader, back-to-back, -back, is Oscar Tuktan with 133. Well done, Oscar. Absolutely killing it, mate. Fantasy leader, surprise, surprise, is Bailey's Brollers, who is still at the top with 2242, and his average has gone up as well, so well done, Bailey's. Did I say just well done, Bailey's? Bailey. I presume it's singular. But we do have a new winner in the game day squad competition for round 21. It was all the way with a massive score of 2473, um, which, you know, was a distant first place this week. So well done all the way. As I always say, guys, joining that comp, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I do a weekly show on it, obviously, and also really cool, interactive, and much more fun way to play fantasy, in my opinion. So click the first link in the description. You can join in all the fun. Before we get into the footy tips, guys, I will have a question to ask you. Do you have a need to upgrade your manscaping routine? because I can personally help you. I, I'm not going to shave you myself, but I can direct you to manscaped.com who sponsor the True Footy YouTube channel and have done for some time because you can get 20% off and free shipping on all their wonderful products. A lot of you who watch this channel are young men who probably have a need to upgrade their manscaping routine. I'm a manscaper myself and the Lawnmower 4.0 is the best tool for the job in terms of getting the job done quickly and easily. It's a great body shaver. They've got stuff for your nose and ear hair as well. Another weed whacker. And on top of that, you can grab some boxes, cologne, I'm a big cologne guy now. I seriously recommend it. If you're a young man in the dating game, seriously, grab yourself some cologne. It makes a world of difference. I've also just started wearing deodorant. That blast past the joke, but if you wanted to grab some deodorant, it does have both ball deodorant and normal deodorant for you as well. So go check out the website. Anything you grab, you get 20% off and free shipping with the code TRUEFOOTY20. Please enjoy. All right, we're back for the round 22 edition on Squiggle, naturally. And we look at the ladder here. Colin would have dropped four losses. That's not massive that's pretty normal actually but obviously that top four race is getting interesting uh, i said top four race i really mean top two race because you've got four teams trying to squeeze into the top two melbourne in second now that's pretty new uh, I, I saw that coming because i tipped geelong to beat port i'm pretty certain so port have now dropped to fourth and a percentage of 108.5 they're going to be safe for the top four but a home final still is going to be really important um, and they don't want to necessarily travel to the mcg or, or the gabba carlton have locked up fifth spot for the time being they're ahead by two points with a healthy percentage um, uh, they're in a good spot. The Bulldogs are there in six. St. Kilda still in the top eight. It's ridiculous. Sorry, that's that's rude, but come on. Geelong's still in ninth. So even though, you know, they probably saved their season to some extent or, you know, kept it alive for another week, they've got a huge contest here against Collingwood, which we'll get into shortly. Sydney up to 10th, Adelaide down 11th. Essendon narrowly keep their season alive with a one-point win against West Coast. But to be honest, 
Having watched that game, I don't really expect Essendon to feature in the finals anytime soon. Bottom four stays the same. Hawthorne can pretty much just keep cruising along, beating heavyweights, and they're still going to have pick three or four based on, you know, whether there's a priority pick in there. Gold Coast down in 14th. They're completely out of the finals race, you would have thought. But we'll go through this week's round of games and we'll see how the ladder changes. So we'll start off with Collingwood versus Geelong. Uh, an absolute heavyweight battle because, you know, I keep saying it, but Geelong, even though they're in their ninth, we still respect them as a team that can beat anyone anywhere on the right day. And obviously, a, it was a good win against Port Adelaide. It was a good contest between two good teams. And you really think, surely, Geelong are going to throw everything at this game. And I don't think they're going to be scared of Collingwood. They beat Collingwood three times last year. Collingwood beat them earlier this year. And they're catching the pies at a good time. Obviously, I think they've lost two on the bounce now. Obviously lost to Carlton, who were in red-hot form. And Hawthorne, you know, their best footy is actually pretty good. So it's hard to know what to make of them. But they've got some injury concerns. Imp- most importantly, Nick Dacos. Um, you know, he was he- held out of the game. Finn McGuinness did a job on him. And now he's injured and he's going to be out for this game as well. And that's uh, he's not the only factor in what makes Collingwood a good team. But obviously, Collingwood are going to have to change the way they play. And that, that could actually work for them. You know, if they find different avenues, it actually makes them harder to play against if uh, Nick Dacos is not really there to be focused on. So... This is going to be tricky, and I actually think Collingwood is still the better side, uh, but this is a tough opponent. I think I'm going to go a roughie here. I think I'm going to go a roughie. This is 50-50 for me because I think Geelong, I'm half expecting them to just come good. You know what I mean? Collingwood's confidence is shot at the moment. I think they'd really love to play you know, a lower-ranked team this week, but it happens to be one of the biggest games of their season. They're still going to have top spot locked up, but I think I'm going to tip an upset here, and I'll say the Cats win this by nine points. North Melbourne versus Essendon. Uh, this could actually be interesting. Essendon's still in the finals race. Like I said, um, you know, look to have the game sewn up at halftime against the Eagles. They were five goals up, and they let a pretty, you know, weak team really take control with a lot of uncontested ball on the outside. And uh, Essendon, you know, you could put it down to a bad day because I think Essendon's skills let them down. A lot of fluffed inside 50s, drop marks, poor shots on goal. They probably should have won the game by more. But even still, when you consider the opposition, uh, not the most compelling performance from Essendon. North, on the other hand, where they have a five goal to one first term against Melbourne, kind of finished where they left off against West Coast. And then, of course, the better team um, sort of outmuscled them and ended up winning by five goals. So this is a marvel. I actually think this is potentially winnable for North if they p- bring the same sort of energy uh, like they did against Melbourne, particularly in that first half. I'm not going to tip it because Essendon, you know... They still won at the end of the day, and they have been a decent team in that they should win this. I don't know, this time of year, I mean, Essendon, technically they're in the shop for the finals, but do the players deep down really believe they're playing for finals anymore? I, I can feel, I can see why they let their focus shift in this game. That's why I feel upset potential here. I'm going to go Essendon, but North definitely have a chance in this game. If, if they start to play, actually, I don't know. I don't know, Clarkson's there now. I feel like they're playing with a bit more spirit. It's only been one game, but I'm getting upset vibes. I'm gonna I'm gonna tip a roughie because my tipping is so poor. I'm gonna say North Melbourne win by seven points. No, I can't do it. Oh, I'm all over the place. Sorry, North. I can't tip you. You're too bad. Okay, Essendon by 22 points. Sorry, North fans. Swans versus the Gold Coast Suns at the SCG. This has been a kind of a happy hunting ground for the Suns. I feel like there's been at least a couple of wins there in the last few years um, against the odds because Sydney have been a good team and historically Gold Coast have not been. The Suns. Um, they took it up to Adelaide they challenged them um, but ultimately they're still five goals off the pace and um, yeah that's probably about right for the gap between those two teams so Gold Coast kind of just sitting there locked into 14th spot their best football is good their best football can challenge Sydney and to be honest my tipping on Sydney this year without analysing it so far like the specifics I feel like it's been really poor and obviously got last week wrong where they beat the Giants and that's no easy task to be honest to beat the Giants in the current form that they're in Uh, Sydney obviously their best should account for them they're in the finals mix and a lot more realistic than, say, an Essendon, in my opinion, considering their percentage, the fact that they're two points higher than them, the fact that they're just a better team and probably have a lot more belief. So I'm going to tip the home side here. There is obviously potential only because Gold Coast play this ground well and Gold Coast kind of randomly show up sometimes, but I'm not going to be confident enough to tip against the Swans here. I'm going to say 34 points. From memory, the Swans really smashed the Gold Coast Suns earlier this year, but it was... Was it in Metricon, wasn't it? Yeah, sitting by 34 points. I'm not going to think too deep about that. Otherwise, I'll tie myself in knots again. Then you got the Lions and the Crows at the Gabba. This has potential to be a good game, uh, purely because I expect, I respect both of these teams as good. Obviously, Brisbane in third. 
just had a tough away win against the Dockers in Perth. It was a good performance generally. Any anytime you notch an away win in Perth, to be honest, even against the bottom four Fremantle, you know they, they can be quite tough to beat at home. So they've just ticked the box there. They haven't really put a foot wrong too often this year. That you know they lost to Melbourne in the dying stages was probably the low light, to be honest. But otherwise, it's been a pretty good and consistent year from the Lions, and they're a very strong home side. Adelaide are in 12th. They just disposed of the Suns by five goals. The biggest concern for me here is Adelaide's back line, which has been depleted by injury. You know, Butts, Murray, someone else that is escaping me. But they've got a very makeshift back line at the moment, and I don't know if they will be able to withstand the Brisbane Lions on their home deck. You know, Joe Danaher, Hipwood. They're going to stretch them for height, and even at ground level, the Lions have some really good small forwards and general medium players as well so uh, even though Adelaide I like them a lot and the way they play and I feel like there's no game that you rule Adelaide out of entirely I think you have to be really brave I, I think Brisbane will snap into gear they, they've got to they've got to really fight for this top two spot and they're within a bee's dick of it so I'll say that the Lions win this by 32 points now Carlton versus Melbourne is arguably the biggest headache tip of the week because Carlton are in shit hot form um, you know what they were a little bit sloppy against St Kilda particularly in the first half they got they were 22 points down at half time against the side that maybe um, probably discredited too much in St Kilda but in terms of strength of opponent that was the the shakiest we've seen Carlton in probably two months uh, but to their credit they had a four goal to zero last term and won the game by 19 points as we expected but it was closer than it should have been in my opinion Melbourne equally uh, had a slow start overcame North Melbourne who kicked five of the first six goals uh, who can be pretty you know tricky to beat in Hobart anyway. This is a tough one. On current form, I actually think the gap is pretty close between these two sides, and it is a critical game for both teams. Carlton, while they're one of the form sides of the comp over the last six weeks or so. They've beaten teams around this Melbourne level. They disposed of Port Adelaide. Uh, they beat Collingwood by three goals. Melbourne probably don't intimidate them in that sense because of how good some of the opponents they've beaten have been. That being said, Melbourne is also right in the thick of this top two race. And that doesn't mean they're going to win, but it'll certainly mean that they give this game the full attention and focus that it deserves. This could be the match of the round. I'm actually pretty excited to watch it. <sighs> I don't know. I think if this was a week ago, I would have tipped Carlton, but I think I'm going to go for the Ds here. Uh, I don't really know why. It's kind of a flip of the coin here. Melbourne are the slightly better team. They definitely are the better team, but Carlton's form is very ominous. But because they haven't proved it over a long period of time, you feel like they're more likely to snap out of it than Melbourne. I'll go Thriller, game the round, Melbourne by four points. West Coast versus Fremantle, the Western Derby. I don't even know what number we're up to now. Who cares? Now, this, this presents as a potentially interesting derby. Eagles home game. We've seen some improved form from West Coast. Uh, there's going to be emotion tied into this as well. Shannon Hearns recently announced his retirement. It'll be his first game since then. His second last game at the level. Shuey's probably coming back into the team some confidence enthusiasm and pride uh, on the line for west coast uh, in particular well for both teams certainly i'm just kind of focusing on west coast right now and we've got a, a very young up-and-coming group that is starting to get a taste for what it's like to win and I, I think we'll put in a pretty good performance and we have historically not made it too easy for Fremantle to beat us considering how bad we've been over the last two years Fremantle haven't made light work of us and I think back to round three where all the injuries hit and West Coast was probably, you know, probably had the better of Fremantle throughout a large period of that game before Freo kind of ran away with it. So the point being is even though Fremantle are much better, we have a history of making it tough for them to beat us. They haven't had a great season. They're on eight wins. Solid performance against Brisbane. Nearly got the job done. They've had some good wins in recent times. Winning at GMHBA is a stunning result. They've beaten Melbourne this year. You know, their best is good. Equally, you know, I, I can't use the, the derby will lift us um, excuse for West Coast and not say the same thing for Fremantle, but there is a home West Coast crowd here. I'm talking this game up as though it's going to be a blockbuster. Uh, to be honest, I think it will be close. I don't think it will be a really high standard. I think Fremantle will win. But I, uh, I think we'll make it tough for him in the same way that we've put in a really improved performance the last four weeks. I think this will be no exception, and I think we'll see some good performances. But Fremantle by, let's call it 16 points, which Fremantle fans won't like, but I, I this is my optimistic take. Hawthorne versus the Bulldogs in Tassie. This is going to be interesting. This is a hard game to pick. Uh, I had a look at how these two teams shape up against each other in Tasmania, and they're one each. So I think Hawthorne won in 21. The Bulldogs beat them there last year. And Hawthorne, in their current form, is probably playing better football you know, since the, the I, I think the turning point is that game against us where they kind of elevated themselves from being a spoon contender. That was the last time they were considered a spoon contender. And they've racked up six wins. They've also just beaten Collingwood. They've had some really good performances this year. And in particular with Jack, uh, James Sicily, sorry, marshalling that defense. He's arguably the most 
the form defender of the competition right now. Makes him a tough prospect. And this game in Tassie will not be simple for the Bulldogs. They had a really good win over Richmond, obviously. Bontempelli, three goals and 32 possessions. Jamara, five goals. Both of these sides will come into this game with a lot of belief and confidence. They're playing well at the moment. This in Tasmania really throws it for me. The Bulldogs also are one of those sides that fluctuate with my confidence in them. So when I think they're going to do really well, they fail. And when I think they're going to fail, they do really well. And last week was an example of that. I tipped Richmond to beat them in an upset and they, you know, they annihilated them in that first quarter. I don't know. I don't know. I kind of want to tip Hawthorne here, but because I've been so poor at tipping the Bulldogs, I want to ignore my instincts here and say that the better team will win. So I'll tip, I'll tip the Bulldogs to keep their... I'd say season alive, to be honest, because they're no lock for the finals, particularly with that percentage. I'll say the Bulldogs win this by seven points, but uh, expect a good game. You know what? I'll even say three points. It'll be a thriller. St. Kilda Richmond, this is an interesting game. Two sides that uh, I believe should be outside of the top eight and currently are on my live ladder. St. Kilda obviously got a fast start against Carlton. Looked like they were going to win the game. Four goals up at halftime. Um, and it looks like we might see a bit of a return to form for the Saints, but obviously couldn't hold on and uh, conceded four goals to zip in the last term. Carlton, better side one. Richmond, I tipped to beat in an upset, like I said, against the Bulldogs, and they got shell-shocked in the first term. So kind of the opposite of St. Kilda here, and uh, obviously won lost the game by like 50 points or something in the end. St. Kilda, obviously, having an extra six points and 10% on Richmond have a much more realistic chance of playing finals. But Richmond don't have a first-round draft pick this year and have no reason to really relax and experiment with uh, you know players in different positions, even though they're not really a really realistic finals chance there's still a good chance that they will come out and try and win this game on pride and you know, obviously McQualter is still kind of auditioning for a permanent coaching role too so the, long story short the, the fact that Richmond are kind of out of the finals race doesn't factor into it for me I think Richmond obviously beat them earlier this year and I do want to tip Richmond here but I am probably underrating the Saints here they probably haven't been as bad as I'm making it seem they haven't been good and they weren't great in the second half against Carlton you know what I'm going to tip the Saints I actually fully intended to tip Richmond, but I am probably overcorrecting a little bit on the Saints here, and uh, I'll give them a seven-point win in this game. Oh, and finally, a uh, pretty interesting contest to end the round with GWS, who I think were the sixth best team, you know, a week ago, or the seventh best team, or however I ranked them. They're now 10th on the ladder, and if they lose this, uh, you know, obviously not going to come into the top eight. Port Adelaide have lost four on the bounce. Let's start with them. You know, it hasn't been the most concerning four loss streak in a row. Obviously, they won 13 in a row before that. It was 13 in a row. They dropped four. They lost to Collingwood. They lost to Geelong. They lost to a red-hot Carlton, and they lost to the Crows. I'm not saying that's a good run of form, but, you know, they got close to Collingwood. They got close to Geelong, and to play that well at GMHBA does suggest to me that it's still a good team under there. It just happens that their losses have come in clusters. They've got this weird thing against Adelaide, and they can't seem to beat them. Fair enough. We can ignore that, kind of. At home, season on the line, top four, probably still sewn up, but I think they'll come to play, and I'm not concerned about them showing up in this game. GWS are a pesky team. They won at Adelaide only a couple of weeks ago against the Crows, who, despite the fact that the Crows have beaten Port Adelaide twice this year, they're not as good as Port Adelaide. And obviously the Giants lost last week against the Swans. So I'm not going to waste too much time on this one. I think we will see a good game. GWS has their chance to win this game because I respect them as a good team, but Port Adelaide will snap the streak and win this game by 24 points and restore a little bit of confidence in them. So there you have it, guys. Wow, that's juicy. So we're up to round 23 and you've got Collingwood and Brisbane playing next week, which will be interesting. Can't wait for that. But yep, Collingwood and Brisbane at the top two. Melbourne slide down to third with uh, just a narrow win. So Brisbane, by my prediction, will have more percentage um, than Melbourne will this week. The Bulldogs up to fifth. Geelong into the eight and Carlton down to eighth if they lose that game against Melbourne. That really shapes as an absolute doozy. The two Sydney sides are ninth and tenth. Essendon still in the mix with that game against Port Adelaide and then the glut of everyone else who hasn't changed position. But there you have it, guys. Those are my tips and predictions for this week. Let me know in the comments what you agree with, what you disagree with. What are your tips? What's your upset of the round? Upset of the round for me is probably North versus Essendon. I very nearly tipped North. Uh, obviously decided to play it safe because uh, that's a stupid one to get wrong if I did get it wrong. Two huge clashes this week. Collingwood versus Geelong, Melbourne versus Carlton, even Port Adelaide versus GWS, another really good contest. And you've got a Western Derby in there. Plenty to look out for this weekend. And I can't wait. I will be in Canada, but I'll be back next week and I'll still be making content, guys. So thanks again for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.